All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. There was nothing here, no choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm... I'm genuinely confused. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. All right, so, uh, guy's clearly dead. Uh, gonna move this body out of here, but first we need another player come up here. All right, so, here's what you're gonna do, all right? All I need you to do, you understand what a first-person shooter is? Uh, sort of, is uh, Call of Duty? Uh, yeah, it's sort of like Call You ever play with WASD or WASD controls? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call You're, of Duty. Okay, okay, so you play Call of Duty on PC? I like, I like the dogs. Oh, you like the dogs. Alright, so here's here's how it works. Basically, um, uh, sometimes when you're playing a game like that, there's basically like a straight linear path with some divergent things and people are always shell shouting at you. you Can know I drop behind cover? Um... That's not really going to be too important here, but yes, you can. There's plenty of places for cover in an office. There's okay. cubicles. So it's like Counter-Strike. Yes, it's it's sort of like, yeah, you've played CS. Okay, yeah. same engine, same engine. So basically... Okay, so the office level. It's like the office level, yes. But you know how in the office level they tell you to go to bomb site A or bomb site B or go get the civilians uh, or whatever yeah. the hell? Yeah, all right, so it's like that. 
but you're going to basically be walking around. Um, okay. So just, do they still tell me where to go? Yes, they're still going to tell you where to go. Do I get to plant a bomb? Mm, you'll find out. Okay. Maybe there will be a bomb, maybe there won't. It's going to be completely up to you. All I right? thought you said it was a linear path. Well, yeah, it's... Uh, it's basically going to be trying to sort of have a bit of irony in it. Like, there's, there's going to be some irony. Where, where... I don't know, man. Call of Duty never had any irony. Just... Well, but that's the point, is, is there's supposed to be irony about this in terms of narrative. It's not about first-person shooters, but just games in general, how they tend to tell you what to do. If that makes any sense? Yeah. Alright, so you're in a broom closet now, so... Go, have at. Oh, okay. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee so, where are the you can't do any worse than... Ah, uh, there's no people. Coming to what? a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Is, is it one of those horror games? Uh, no, there's there's nothing horrific. There's nothing going to jump scare at you. Nothing's going to try to... You just walk around? Yeah. Here's the door. Just go. Uh, okay. Yep. That's that's basically how you play the game. So, good luck, son. Good luck. I'm sure you'll be fine. Sure. 